Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends, welcome to our event 2021, the uh, emergence of digital foreign policy. It's an absolute pleasure to have you at this event, which is organized by Diplo Foundation and the Geneva Internet Platform. My name is Katharina Höhne. I'm the Director of Research at Diplo Foundation, and I have the pleasure to moderate part of the event. This is our high-level opening, and we're very pleased to have some excellent speakers who will share their insight and really get us going um, for this event. Before I introduce them, let me very briefly share some housekeeping rules. So at Diplo Foundation, we want to make this event as interactive as possible. This means we're looking for your questions, your comments, and your reactions in the chat. My colleagues, We'll be monitoring the chat here in Zoom as well as the chat on social media and bring your comments and questions back into the discussion. For example, for this session, I'm joined by my colleague uh, Marco Lotti from Geneva. But without further ado, I think let's turn to this opening session. And I have the pleasure to introduce our speakers. Um, we have Federal Councillor Mr. Ignacio Cassis who is the head of the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs of Switzerland. We have Mr. Huden Zhao, the Secretary General of the International Telecommunications Union. And we have Dr. Johan Kubalia, who is the Executive Director of Diplo Foundation and the head of the Geneva Internet Platform. Unfortunately, Councillor Cassis cannot be with us in person. However, he has recorded a video message for us and I think let's have a listen, let's have a look and see what Councillor Cassis has prepared for us. Secretary General Zhao, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to warmly welcome you to Geneva, if only virtually. These days, digital technologies are our primary means of staying in touch. And today's event shows that even our foreign policy is more dependent on technology than ever. But how do we set about promoting a secure, open and stable digital space? How do we apply international law in the digital space? How do we govern new technologies such as artificial intelligence? How do we ensure that data is protected appropriately? The way in which these technologies are governed has a profound impact on our lives. It is therefore essential that they are secure and reliable, and that they can be trusted. Consequently, digital foreign policy is rapidly growing in importance. In this context, Switzerland defined a digital foreign policy strategy last November. Drawing on our constitution and our strengths, Switzerland's digital foreign policy strategy defines four fields of actions. Digital governance, prosperity and sustainable development, cybersecurity, and digital self-determination. First, we want a balanced approach to digital governance. That means new rules should not be created where they are not needed. Instead, digital space should be subject to existing norms, standards, and international law. However, to achieve this, there needs to be better cooperation among the different stakeholders. I'm grateful that ITU Secretary General Zhao is with us today. The ITU plays a key role in bringing professionals together around the shared goal of achieving global connectivity and enhancing digital capacities worldwide. Other Geneva-based institutions, such as the IGF Secretariat and the Geneva Internet Platform, also play a vital role in fostering a globally inclusive dialogue on digital governance. In addition, the Geneva Science and Diplomacy Anticipator is specifically promoting dialogue between scientific and diplomatic experts on social challenges posed by new technologies. Second, we are determined to maximize the potential of digital technologies to foster prosperity and development. Digital technologies must guarantee major steps forward in the fields of business and finance, fintech, medicine, medtech, peace building, peace tech, and poverty reduction, tech for good. We are partnering with the International Committee of the Red Cross and the United Nations to advance data responsibility in humanitarian action. To this end, we have jointly launched the Humanitarian Data and Trust Initiative. Third, 
digital transformation will not be successful without cybersecurity. In 2020, cybercrime resulted in losses amounting to more than 1% of global GDP. Switzerland is therefore actively involved in efforts to develop an international framework on responsible state behavior in cyberspace. To address the lack of trust between major powers, we are offering Geneva a neutral platform for discussion as well as our good offices. Yet cybersecurity will only be possible when we include other stakeholders, particularly from the private sector. Together with today's hosts, Switzerland has therefore launched the Geneva Dialogue on Responsible Behaviour in Cyberspace, bringing together some of the world's leading ICT companies. The Dialogue is fostering a common approach among global industry partners towards developing secure digital products. Fourth, technological progress cannot be an end in itself. The primary focus must be on people, their rights and freedoms, and their self-determination. Human rights apply both online and offline. Specifically, they protect people's privacy and freedom of expression. Yet today, those rights are often insufficiently respected. Freedom of expression online is increasingly being curtailed in some countries. Switzerland is contributing to this debate through its concept on digital self-determination. Ladies and gentlemen, Switzerland is committed to a free, secure and open digital space. Our digital foreign policy strategy is aligned with the UN Secretary General's roadmap for digital cooperation. I would like to invite all stakeholders to join forces with us and make use of the unique multi-stakeholders ecosystem that Geneva can offer to achieve this goal. Thank you for your attention. And a warm thank you to Councillor Cassis for giving us this tour de force through the Swiss strategy, as well as some of the key points that we will be discussing today. But without further ado, I would like to hand the floor to ITU Secretary General Zhao for his opening remarks. Secretary General, the floor is yours. Excellencies, experts, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Let me start by thanking the Diplo Foundation and my good friend, Dr. Johan Kavalija, for his invitation to speak to you today. I also want to acknowledge the presence of His Excellency Federal Councillor, Mr. Ignacio Cassis, and thank him for his uh, nice words to ITU. Switzerland has taken a leading role in development of a digital foreign policy strategy. And Geneva, the home of ITU, like uh, other UN agencies, is well positioned as a global hub for digital foreign policy discussions. As our councillor just mentioned, a lot of ambassadors here and a lot of uh, uh, NGOs here and a lot of uh, expert groups here. I'm pleased to see many national tech ambassadors among us in this meeting today. It shows how ICTs are increasingly getting to the top of government's political agenda. It also shows how much this new decade will be different than the previous one. Because the security of the cyberspace has found a much wider audience in the era of COVID-19, but also because technologies and social media are moving fast and the local authorities are facing challenges and pressure from the technology-empowered public and very powerful business owners, making markets work for all partners at the national level has become more challenging. The shift in the digital technology and the policy landscape has moved to the international arena. People coming to IT meetings are no longer only technical experts from ICT ministries as was the case more than a decade ago. In recent years, we have also welcomed people 
who are engaged in digital foreign policy and those in other ministries such as finance, education, health, and several others. It is important for policymakers and regulators to recognize that the technology trends we are witnessing will affect developing and at least developed countries differently to developed countries. And I said earlier, it is also important to note that the cybersecurity concerns are reaching unprecedented levels. It is, in, it is in this context that ITU had an open consultation on the Global Cybersecurity Agenda Framework, GCA, just yesterday. And this GCA agenda was established 2008 and ITU is updating with our members, with our partners to make it relevant to our situation today. ITU remains committed to building confidence and a security in the use of ICTs percent to with this action line C5 more than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the start of a new decade for digital foreign policy, a new decade to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals and leave no one offline. As Secretary General clearly called the global family, we want to do this kind of efforts to make sure that by 2030, we will not leave anybody offline. But right now, nearly half of the world is still unconnected. ICTs present us with opportunities unimaginable just a few years ago, but also with the new challenges for international cooperation. To connect those not connected yet, half population, definitely we need a new approach, we need a new innovative ideas, a new strategy investment, and also very important, we need a new strategy of international cooperation. I hope we can use this moment to increase international collaboration, foster ICT infrastructure investment, and build tomorrow's digital future on a solid foundation of a trust for everyone, everywhere. Let me close my short remarks by expressing my appreciation to the Swiss authorities and to the Diplo Foundation. I look forward to strengthening our cooperation in the weeks and months to come with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary General Zhao. The pleasure is certainly ours. What I noticed is the core or uh, the uh, point that uh, there's a new decade for digital foreign policy uh, ahead of us, which is really interesting. I also noticed, and this is kind of overlapping in both opening remarks, um, a commitment to digital cooperation, mentioning of the sustainable development goals, but also uh, looking at who is not connected yet and connecting the unconnected. With those things in mind, I would like to hand um, the floor to Jovan. Jovan, what are your reflections on what we heard so far? Thank you. Thank you, Katarina. It's a really great uh, honor and pleasure to join uh, Secretary General Hulin and uh, Federal Council, Mr. Cassis, in uh, addressing the opening session. They already outlined three key building blocks for our discussion and the reason why we started Digital Foreign Policy Initiative. One is the thread of the developing digital foreign policy strategies as Switzerland did in November. We have also Australia, France, quite a few countries. The second, as, uh, as Secretary General outlined, is a really rich environment in Geneva for digital policy. Many activities are centered around the ITU, but we have also missions that have a capacity now, as we'll see today, to uh, follow these issues. And it has been developed gradually over the last, let's say, definitely 15 to 20 years since the World Summit on Information Society in Tunis. Therefore, there is a comprehensive ecosystem which can address these issues. And third point in this build-up is uh, Diplo's experience of more than 20 years of building capacity and training people in the field of internet governance, digital governance, digital policy. Now, let me bring it to uh, 
the reason why we are today. Uh, the reason uh, is, uh, among other things, the, these flags, which are in the, in the background, flags representing 193 states. Behind these flags, you have uh, diplomatic missions, diplomatic ministries of foreign affairs. And most of these ministries of foreign affairs are trying to grasp this digital challenge. How to participate in negotiation on standards, privacy, data, artificial intelligence, e-commerce. And this is this great transition which is happening. There is a need for a lot of capacity. There is a need for developing of internal structures. There is, there is a need to share experiences. And it starts from sometimes uh, uh, rather trivial issues over reducing confusion. As, in, as we will be discussing today, there is sometimes confusion if this, what is happening, we should call cyber e-tech digital online diplomacy. And this is the first starting point to bring clarity in our discussion. The second point is to share experiences among countries, how to develop this internal structure, how to fit uh, digital, not only in technological issues, but also transition of commerce, health, humanitarian, intellectual property and other issues which are becoming increasingly digital. And third point, how to train current diplomats and the next generation of diplomats to become sort of boundary spanners, people who can bridge the boundaries between technology and tradition policy issues. And as we are discussing this issue around us here in Geneva, this big transition of digitalization of traditional policy fields, whether it is environment, trade, humanitarian health is happening. Increasing number of issues on traditional and traditional organizations are becoming digitalized. Therefore, this is more or less canvas for our discussion today. Need to do something very fast, need to develop capacity and need to help countries in particular small and developing countries as Secretary General and Federal Councilor uh, indicated to engage and to participate. Without their participation, we won't have a legitimate, inclusive and effective global digital policy. And I would say any policy, including trade, health and humanitarian field. This is also the reason why we'll, we'll conclude today's uh, discussion with a fireside chat on a very simple question. How is Africa represented today in global digital policy negotiations? And with this, and with uh, once more a great appreciation for Secretary General and Federal Council for joining us today, I would like uh, Kat to invite you to guide us through this exciting program. Over to you. Definitely. Um, let me first remind everyone that we're looking for your comments and your questions in the chat. But before we come to that, I have a question for Secretary General Zhao. Um, Yuan, you just mentioned capacity building. And what I also heard in the introductory remarks of Secretary General Zhao was this emphasis on connecting the unconnected. And I think here I would uh, like to hear a bit more. Um, this is one of the greatest challenges um, facing us. So Secretary General Zhao, why is it so important for information and communication technologies to get to the top of the global political agenda in this context of connecting the unconnected? Yeah, thank you very much for your question. I think that uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, you know, brought uh, us uh, real, uh, you know, changes that uh, if uh, before COVID-19, we talked a lot about the information society and people may not have that kind of feeling, what it means uh, in information society. But uh, this COVID-19 really forced us to come into this uh, arena to, to to see, you know, the how can we, you know, survive with uh, uh, our ICT and uh, information uh, tools to, to, to help us connect it through this uh, difficult moment. But now I also like to, uh, to, to point out that uh, when I talked about uh, Geneva is a nice place for such kind of discussions, and I would like to remind you another fact that it was in December 2003 when we had our first phase of a World Summit Information Society. 
under the invitation from ITU, organized by UN, to organize this uh, World Summit of Information Society, 2003, December. It's about, uh, uh, you know, uh, almost 20, <laughs> uh, 20 years now. And, uh, you know, we consider this kind of uh, Wi-Fi connections, you know, 5G and, uh, uh, you know, iPad connections, you know, tele, uh, teleworking and then you know, uh, tele-education seems to be granted. And now it seems to be relatively easy for us. Now we are just worried about the security issues and the cyber security issues and the privacy issues, freedom of expression, so all this one. But if we don't have this infrastructure, we cannot uh, even think about that. Too. So these are really wonderful achievement over the last two decades or over the last decade. Since we organized this World Wishes Summit, we mobilized everybody to work on this. And then we have this wonderful infrastructure available to those already connected. As I pointed out, still unfortunately today, half population not connected yet. And we cannot just make this kind of ICD tools benefit to those already connected. And we should also think about the, the other half. And as I mentioned, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Grades, uh, in June last year at the General Assembly, called for global family to work hard to bring everybody online by 2030. Please just imagine, since 2003, we launched this with this process up to now, still we have half population not connected. Why? Because this half population are living in the area less profit. And then it's hardly to be connected. Therefore, to have these people connected within the next 10 years, we need a very good strategy to work together. So that is one thing. Another thing is, you know, that with this COVID-19, we learned the lessons. And with this pressure of to connect everybody online in the next 10 years, and we have to change our strategy. What a, what a good lesson we learned in the past, uh, we leave this to the ICT authority, we leave to the ICT industry to invest in the ICT infrastructure. Why uh, little by little uh, government uh, realized that this is important, we cannot leave this to the ICT authority. And all part of the government, the education part, you know, labor part, you know, energy part, you know, transport part, uh, culture part, everybody now try to modernize their system with ICT. But uh, to use the very limited uh, resources of investment by each of them individually with a solar arrangement, I think it's not the best way. So that is another lesson we have to work together. Now, when we talk about uh, those not connected yet, as I mentioned, those people are in the poor area, poor, is not very well uh, reachable, you know, that. Uh, uh, apparently, Africa continent is one of the uh, places that uh, we still have to work hard to, to, to change the data divider there. But even so, in Africa, you will see that everywhere, every part, every country in the African continent, they have new technologies there as well. And uh, I visited one, a few countries. In the, their capital, they have 4G, even 5G. But in their countryside, they don't have 2G even. So that is uh, exact reality. Now we really have to work hard. I myself talked to our uh, foreign minister, you know, uh, Cassis, you know, several times, and uh, I'm very pleased to hear from him that uh, Switzerland also pay attention to support uh, African countries to, to 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 develop ICT infrastructure to help their social economic development. So IT is looking for partnership with everybody to come together to to work on this important issue. And we should not, and uh, this is the one point. Another point is uh, today, you know, we're talking about uh, technology uh, moving fast. And with technology, now we are talking about 5G. And if we have 4G problems there, now you have uh, a new arrival of 5G. So how can we make sure that the public will have uh, cyber confidence to use their, you know, uh, you know cyber services? So this is, uh, uh, you know, also, you know, pressure to us. And we have to make sure that we will offer our people with the new technology. IT is working very hard. Now 5G, you know, cloud computing, all these kind of things, the Internet of Things. So that uh, is two challenges. One is to use modern, uh, more, most advanced technologies to upgrade our services, to provide a better service to our people connected. 
The other is we have to work hard to bring the others not connected, be connected, half population. So this is a challenge. So Thank that is so the much. reason I highlighted four eyes. Infrastructure. Infrastructure cover two sides. To connect our people by infrastructure. Therefore, we extend our infrastructure to those areas not connected yet. And then we have to use the new technology to upgrade our infrastructure with a better service. So this is two major parts. Infrastructure. Then we need a very big investment. And for investment, I also like to highlight that investment in the past up to now more or less leave to the you know, ICT industry. And we do not really you know, uh, you know, put this as the general issue. So that is the reason why we still have pop, pop population not connected because there's no profit. There's no profit that you leave this to the private sector. It's very hard to attract them. So we have to work hard to bring uh, investment in this area and particularly to connect those not connected yet. Within um, next the, 10 years, Secretary General. then we need uh, uh, innovation. We need innovation because uh, to, to, to work the same way cannot uh, uh, you know, continue this life you know, to, to, to reach our goals. So we need innovation for technologies, we need innovation for policies, and this kind of uh, effort by Johan to have uh, foreign policy uh, coordination, so that is also innovative way. So I, I fully support that one. And then finally, inclusiveness. So it's more, uh, you know, we have to connect everybody. Now here in Geneva, I know that in March 2020, from a television, Swiss or Mount, they mentioned that in the mountain area, we have a senior citizens of a Swiss people who don't know how to use the internet to order the goods, to, to pay the services by, by mobile phones. They don't know. And they only rely on the cash, but they cannot go out of their houses to, to, to go to the machine to take money. And they, they have a trouble. So this, uh, Senior people, you know, we, we, we should not let them out. We should not let them <clears throat> left, uh, behind. And all this, I think that uh, disabled people, you know, that uh, weak uh, population like uh, women and girls, all this, I think that we should not leave anybody behind. So that Thank is you so much. why I, I highlighted four eyes, infrastructure, investment, innovation, and inclusiveness. So I'm very pleased. I know that you, you want me to stop. Let me stop. <laughs> Okay. Well, we don't want you to stop, actually. It's just time, time is advancing so fast, but I think it's also a good moment to stop with this reference to um, the five eyes. And I mean, what you gave us is, is a, basically a full roadmap um, for our discussion and for this conference, which we couldn't be um, happier about. My colleague Marco Lotti has been monitoring um, the chat and the comments. Marco, can you give us a five second, I know this is impossible, but a one minute perhaps brief overview of what has been happening in the chat, just to acknowledge the discussion that has been taking place there. Thank you very much, Katarina. Exactly. I will just briefly mention the main threads that have emerged. I think they can serve as food for thoughts for the discussions and the, and the specific panels that we will have during the day. Very briefly, we had one thread of discussion about cybersecurity and market failures and externalities that and the, the connection among these three elements, in, in particular information and asymmetry and externalities. There were also some resources uh, by Isaac uh, pointed out in the chat. We had a second stream of, um, of comments regarding internet fragmentation, what, what one of the participants has, has addressed as digital nationalism. And uh, it was, uh, was debated to what extent this ha has good and also bad effects on the internet, if any, if, the, if any good effects are, are, are to be considered. Uh, on the other hand, there was also a last, um, thread of discussions which uh, regard the connectivity and especially uh, governments that uh, do not allow uh, full uh, access and uh, open internet to what extent the national uh, policy and development agenda when it comes to access to the internet is matching this type of practices these are these are in a nutshell the three main main threads which again can serve as i think as a food for thoughts that can be um, dealt with more in, in 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 depth in each of the panels the floor is back to you katarina thank you thank you so much marco for this snippet of the discussion so with that we close our opening uh, remarks our opening of the conference and let me thank uh, again very much uh, Councillor Ignacio Cassis, 
uh, Secretary General Hu Lin Zhao and uh, Yuan Kubalia for their opening remarks and for really inspiring us uh, for what lies ahead uh, in this event and for giving us an excellent roadmap uh, for our discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you also to um, your comments and questions in the chat. We will continue with that throughout the event, so please um, keep them coming. But um, with those remarks of thanks and without further ado, what's next? So immediately next, we have two ambassador, ambassadors round tables who will be taking place in parallel. The first round table is on digital, for, it's called Digital Foreign Policy on the Ground. It will be moderated by my colleague, uh, Dr. Stephanie borg seiler And we have an excellent lineup for this round table. We have Ambassador Mohamed Idres of Egypt, Mr. Chris Painter, Ambassador Tadej Rupe of Slovenia, and Ambassador Thomas Schneider from Switzerland. The other round table, which takes place in parallel, is called Developing and Implementing Digital Foreign Policy. The lineup is similarly as excellent. We have Dr. Jon van Zun from Switzerland. We have Ambassador Tobias Fieken from Australia and Ambassador Natalie Jasma from the Netherlands. Once again, thank you, Councillor Cassis, Secretary General Zhao, and uh, thank you, Jovan. 